So we've got Steph Marriott, who is a registered midwife and professional midwifery advocate from the UK. And at present, Steph is an international midwife mentor for the United Nations Popular Fund, Population Fund in Cox's Bazaar, Bangladesh, where she provides mentoring and technical guidance to national midwives and other professionals involved in sexual and reproductive health and rights. So co-presenting with um, Steph today, we've got uh, Miss Abiku Doreen Ambayo, who is an international midwife with 20 years experience in more than five countries where she has focused on mentoring, clinical training, capacity building of the health workforce, programming and establishing new health facilities. She is a registered member of the Nursing and Midwifery Council of Uganda. She's been involved in many emergencies internationally and at present works in the largest refugee camp in the world, Cox's Bazaar, Bangladesh, as a midwife mentor for UNFPA. Here, here she is also a member of the Sexual and Reproductive Health and Rights Working Group and a member of the Maternity Mortality Review Team. And also presenting with them today is Omila Shyam, um, who undertook a three-year diploma to become a professional midwife with Hope Foundation at the Brack University in Bangladesh. Since 2018, she has worked as a midwife and more recently as a midwifery supervisor for Hope Foundation, an NGO providing services to Bangladeshi and Rohingya refugee women and girls in Cox's Bazaar, uh, Bangladesh. So I will now hand over to um, Stephanie and the presenters who will um, talk to you today about the use of video and photo sharing online chat group for the provision of midwifery mentoring in rural Bangladesh and Rohingya refugee camps. So Stephanie, I'm now going to make you the presenter. And I'll go on mute while you come off mute um, to start. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. I am hoping that you can see my screen as I have taken over sharing from Justine. Thank you for the introduction, Justine. Um, so welcome, everybody. Um, I am Steph, as Justin explained. I am a midwife mentor with UNFPA in Cox Bazaar. Um, and I've been working in my current role in Bangladesh for the past eight months. Um, and I will now hand over to Amila to introduce herself. Yeah, assalamu alaikum and very good morning to everyone. Uh, this is Unmila Shem, third best of midwife and the midwife supervisor at Hope Foundation, UNFPA SRS project for humanitarian response. Now, Dorin will present herself. Thank you. there Doreen if you just come off mute if you're going to say um, hello did you want to say something or shall I let Steph carry on? Um, we just seem to be having technical um, issues with uh, Doreen at the moment. Um, I think she might be trying to log in and log back in again. Um, Steph, are you happy to continue until we get Doreen back? Yes, I will begin. Hopefully she will rejoin us. Um, so, excuse me while I multitask doing slides I've not presented before. Um, so, um, the 
This talk is going to be initially an overview of the work doing in Cox Bazaar, uh, but is mainly to focus on the use of a video and photo sharing um, online group we use as a, a mentoring technique here. Um, so we are going to focus on four things. The background to the context of the UNFPA supported midwifery programs in Bangladesh. Why a photo and video sharing group um, has been implemented, how that works, and then Amila is going to share some examples and her experiences of using the group. Um, I'm just checking if Joy has rejoined. She has not, so I shall continue. Um, so initially, the background to some of the work that we are doing. So for those of you who don't know about the UNFPA, the UNFPA is the United Nations Population Fund and is the UN's sexual and reproductive health agency. Our mission is to deliver a world where every pregnancy is wanted, every childbirth is safe, and every young person's potential is fulfilled. And we base this around to align with the UN Sustainable Development Goals, three main goals, that there are zero preventable maternal deaths, zero unmet need for family planning, and zero gender-based violence or harmful practices occurring where we work. So some key facts about Bangladesh. So Bangladesh has a population of 164 million, a life expectancy with an average of 73 years, with 75% of the populations considered literate. Household electricity access is estimated to be only 56%. And the maternal mortality ratio, although difficult to estimate because of challenges with data collection in the context in which we work, is estimated to be 196 maternal deaths for every 100,000 live births, which puts us approximately 144th out of the 199 countries that have provided data recently. And of all births in the whole country, 49.8% are estimated to be attended by a skilled birth attendant, a midwife being considered a skilled birth attendant. Now, the maternal mortality ratios are difficult to estimate for Bangladesh, partly because the most recent software that we now use, what's called the District Health Information Software, actually only collects information from health facilities, not from communities where we know a huge number of deaths happen but are not reported, which is why we give the data with some things. Are you here, Doreen? Yes. Lovely. Um, so Thank you. Sorry. It's okay. Yeah. I have just finished this slide. You continue on. Okay. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you so much, Steph and Justine. Apologies for the internet interruption. I'm called Ababiku Dorin Ambayo. I'm a midwife working in Bangladesh and I come from Uganda. I'm going to continue from where my colleague Steph started from. Key facts about Bangladesh Bangladesh has a population of 164 million. And 73, 73 years uh, of uh, life expectancy, the literacy rate is uh, 75%. Uh, 56% households has no has access to electricity. The maternal mortality ratio is 196 per 1,000 life birth. And Percentage of birth attendant by skilled birth attendants is 49.8%. As midwives, we do not look at the mother alone. We also have to look at the newborn. So the, we, I'm going to also talk about the neonatal mortality rate in Bangladesh is 185 per 2, 232. That is a country data which was provided in 2019. 
and fresh still birth rate is uh, 218 per 231. It's also a country wide uh, data which was provided in 2019 by UNICEF. Yes. Key facts about Bangladesh district. Bangladesh is, uh, uh, I'm going to mostly talk about Cox Bazaar. About Cox Bazaar, it is the most southerly district on Bangladesh and it's bordered by Indian Ocean and Myanmar. It has a 78.8 is percentage is a rural, rural. 90% are Muslims and 33% life below poverty life and national average is 31%. 12% don't have access to electricity and the literacy rate is 29%. It has a population of 2289, 990, and a household access to electricity is 32%, and mortality, maternal mortality ratio is 158 per 100 life birth, and a attendance by skilled birth is 46.8%. Next slide. Yes, Cox Bazaar District and Rohingya refugee. The Rohingya refugee, the first ones came into Cox Bazaar in 1970. This is a refugee from Myanmar to refugee in Cox Bazaar. In, it, in it 2015, around 35 thousand came to Cox Bazaar also. In 2016, 80,000 also flew to Cox Bazaar refugee camp. In 2017, 745,000 came in. And in 2020, population in Cox Bazaar went to 8,000 Six, six and 4,075, and this is the most dense populated refugee camp in the world. The refugees in, in Cox Bazaar faced a lot of discrimination. They also faced stateless and targeted violence in the Rokhine state that is in Myanmar. This followed attack in, in 1991, 1992, 1998, and 2016, which made the largest and the largest number of the population from Myanmar flew to Cox Bazaar. Since then, the estimated population now in the camp is for 7,000, um, Rohingyas in, including 400 children. Next slide. I'm just, going to go to that I'm just going to go to that slide and then I'll play. The yes. Thank you so much. Justine is going to play for us a video by a professor midwife. She's a new, is a, one of the third batch of the midwife, and she's going to talk about midwifery in Fox Bazaar in her video. Did you just want to talk to the stats on the slide first, just while I get the video up? Yes, I feel.
Yes, before this video goes on, about midwifery in Bangladesh. Midwifery in Bangladesh started in 2015. The first professional midwives educated to ICM standard in Bangladesh graduated. In 2016, the first newly graduated midwives were employed with the NGOs in Bangladesh, especially in Cox Bazaar. In 2018, the first batch professor midwives were deployed to government of Bangladesh health facilities. Before in Bangladesh, there was no midwife. So there was no one who can take care only for the women. So that's how I think midwives can do something different for saving lives during their pregnancy time. From my childhood, my thinking is different. And I have a great vision to change the midwifery in Bangladesh. I am Kanata Akhtar. I'm a midwife, I'm 23 years old and I'm working as a midwife supervisor at Hopefield Hospital and the Hope Foundation. I had a wish after giving my secondary school, I, I might be a lawyer, <laughs> but somehow I had an grief and feeling like that maybe I can be a healthcare provider. I have seen my mom help other people. So I think midwifery services, this is the way to help the people. I can help the women. The Hope Foundation have a midwifery school. There is no other organization in the Cox's Bazaar which are actually providing the training of midwives. Suddenly I heard one news from the Hope Foundation are recruiting some midwives. So I just applied for the registration and the exam. I did best exam and it was 69 out of 70. So I was selected <laughs> and then this way I'm here now as a midwife. This is a non-profit organization. We are giving full free services completely for the women and their baby. Our respected president, Dr. Riftakar Mahamud, she actually created a golden change. This means you have to give care to the women from the conception to the birth. For an example, antenatal care, postnatal care, mental health, postpartum psychosis, there is a lot of things. And we are trying as much as possible how we can serve the society. But they don't want to come here example there is family reason because they are saying my husband is not allowing me to come to the hospital among them the fear is one thing hospital fear in the campsite there is too many houses in a small area so it's too tough actually to maintain the hygiene by them they are doing the delivery, giving birth in the mud. Infection can happen, anything can happen. To improve the facility-based delivery. This is our main goal. It was in 2018, a woman came to our hospital, but I didn't know her history. I said, oh, the baby is not crying after the delivery. And I started to give resuscitation to the baby. And during the 25th number breathe, the baby was cried out so loudly. Actually, I felt so happy and she was saying she had three previous stillbirth. Can you imagine that? I took history from her, how, how it was happened, she said. There was no trained midwife. That's why we always try to keep them in the facility and also to motivate them to go other's facility also, wherever you feel comfort. The midwives, they are like sister as your sister, so we are doing our best to give you comfort.
I always love to empower the midwife. I want to involve the midwife in so many sectors. In every corner of the society, every corner of the village, every corner of the unity, I want to set up midwife services where within the second, within the minute, we will be there. This is my vision. Thank you so much, Doreen. Justin. Carry on. No, thank you. Yes. Next slide. That wonderful and nice video is from one of the midwives founded by UNFPA. She's in third batch, so she's talking about the work she's doing and the work all the midwives are doing in Bangladesh, especially in Cox Bazar refugee camp. So that is where we are and where I and my colleague Stefan is working. The background, about the background, UNFPA uh, supports 161 newly qualified midwives through NGOs in Cox Bazar district. And the video which was played is from Hope Foundation. It's from one of the UNFPA founded NGOs. These midwives provide comprehensive sexual reproductive health services to women and girls in 23 health facilities. I and Steph Stephanie uh, mentor midwives in all these 23 health facilities. These facilities is comprised of uh, hospitals, primary health care centers, and health posts with the women-friendly spaces. In the women-friendly spaces, we offer the services for uh, post-abortion care, um, menstrual regulation, family planning, uh, clinical management of rape, and other GBV gender-based violence services. And it's provided by the midwives in the women-friendly spaces. These midwives are supervised by 12 national midwifery supervisors. And um, we have uh, newly created three national midwifery coordinators who will be helping I and Stephanie in the mentorship we are doing and they will also mentor the national midwives and the midwife supervisors. There are currently two international midwife mentors providing clinical mentorship that is in I and my colleague Stephanie. Next slide. About our mentorship, uh, UNFPA has supported international midwife mentors for three years in Cox Bazaar. That is starting from 2018 till now. Mentorship is critical for a newly establishing profession with no national midwifery leadership, pre-service education gaps, high staff turnover and health facility not providing WHO standard quality care. Um, we always discuss with this midwife and the clinical, the clinical mentorship. We have a lot of topics and methodologies. We have online meetings with the midwife supervisors. We also have in that meeting, we have topics where the midwives will present their topics. And if there are questions, the midwife supervisors will also ask questions. We visit facilities and we train midwives. We do training. We also do case review. The case review, are, for example, if a mother is referred with a PPH, we have to review the case and find out what 
the midwife has done and what the midwife has not done so that we can correct them for the next patient. And uh, we do clinical case mentorship, online photo video sharing, chat group, which my colleague Steph is going to talk about. Over to Steph. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Doreen. Can I get you to mute, Doreen, before I start talking? Great. Perfect. So, um, I'm now going to talk in a bit more detail about one of our mentoring techniques, which, um, as Doreen alluded to, is a photo and video sharing group. So, why did we introduce this system? So like most places in the world, working in Bangladesh has been impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic. Along with some team members leaving and international staff not being in Cox Bazaar, this resulted in a reduction in in-person mentorship at health facilities. Some virtual mentorship was introduced, for example, online meetings, but there were still reduced opportunities for feedback from the international midwife mentors. Mentorship from wise happening through other UNFPA Bangladesh projects and the sharing of photos has been an informal method of providing feedback in these other locations. How to monitor what is going on in all health facilities has always been a challenge in humanitarian and development contexts, especially when large numbers of facilities are, small, are supported by a small number of people, as is the case for our team. Through the sharing of photos and videos, it is possible to review the obvious. For example, is chest rise achieved during newborn resuscitation practice on a mannequin? But also coincidental observations can be made. For example, in a photo of immediate skin to skin, what position is the woman in? Previously, there had been a paper-based system, which is detailed in the corner of the image here. It resulted in midwifery supervisors spending time in an office writing reports, not in health facilities mentoring. There were also inaccuracies in information sharing, often due to the fact that the report was being written in English, not Bangla, but it was also not effective at achieving results. So let me give you an example. If a report states taught helping babies breathe, a program many of you with will be familiar with for teaching basic resuscitation of a newborn baby versus reviewing a video clip of all midwives achieving chest rise on a mannequin. You can not only see that HBB was taught in that health facility without the need of written English, but you can also provide feedback on it, for example, on hand positioning. So how does the photo and video sharing group work as a reporting system? So this slide details who the members of the group are. The clinical coordinators and quality assurance officers are Bangladeshi doctors who work for national NGOs, partnered with UNFPA, and along with many other duties, manage the midwives. We are, as Doreen also mentioned, in the process of orientating a new role called a national midwifery coordinator, who have very recently become members of this group as well. They are also holding the first national midwifery leadership position in Cox Bazaar. So how does the group work? At the time of launching and now when new members join, they are briefed on the guidelines of the group. Confidentiality of discussion is important, as is the consent process for the sharing of photos that include women. Midwives explain to women what the purpose of the photo is and show her the photo before sharing with the group. The option of blurring the face is also given. This process contributes also to teaching on respectful maternity care, as we are constantly repeating the concept of consent. We meet once a fortnight with all midwifery supervisors, currently virtually, and support them to undertake mentorship in one focused area for the next fortnight. The group is flexible to meet the needs of what is happening in the response at the time. An example of this is following a recent massive fire in some of the refugee camps. There were changes to midwifery services in fire destroyed areas. This photo on the slide was shared in the group and shows the service midwives were providing in temporary shelters to the women in the affected areas. 
Any of the members detailed on the previous slide can provide feedback on anything shared in the group. This means that midwifery supervisors can learn from the feedback their colleagues receive, something that was not possible when feedback was given individually from written reports. The group is still working as a reporting system. Midwife supervisors are visiting health facilities frequently and are undertaking some supervisory activities at each visit. Because the group replaced a formal weekly report, the guidelines on what activities needed to be undertaken each week still needed to remain. So a basic report, which you can see at the bottom of the slide, is still completed by the clinical coordinators so that UNFPA are able to identify how frequently a health facility is being visited by a midwifery supervisor and what activities have been undertaken during that visit. So a bit more about these weekly activities. So as this slide states, each midwifery supervisor needs to submit a minimum of one photo, and one video to the group per facility that she supervises each week. And these photos and videos need to demonstrate the following four activities. The first is that a teaching session is undertaken. So this photo demonstrates a group of midwives undertaking an activity about completing and interpreting a partograph as part of a fortnight of activities surrounding identification and management of prolonged and obstructed labour. Secondly, that a role play or simulation was undertaken and that every midwife present undertook the simulation. Justine is going to show a video now which demonstrates two midwives on duty in a rural health facility achieving chest rise on a mannequin when undertaking a simulation of newborn resuscitation. I am Padrani Mundal, Midway of Pratnapalo. I am a baby resist rising on the cover. I'm not the middle from Ratna Balong. Now I practice as baby chest movement. Thank you for sharing that, Justine. So the third aspect is that a teaching video has been shown. Medical supervisors are signposted to either reliable sources such as medical aid videos, safe delivery app or global health media or a specific individual video for the topic. These pictures detail midwives undertaking an exercise on monitoring maternal and fetal well-being in labour, which is detailed on the teaching video. Finally, the midwife supervisors must demonstrate that evidence-based practice is being implemented at the facility. These photos detail the monitoring of a fetal heart rate during labour, a woman being supported to labour in an upright position and a baby receiving immediate skin to skin. These photos are the most effective for discussion and feedback. For example, the photo is demonstrating a baby in immediate skin to skin, which is fantastic. But feedback was also given why the woman had IV fluids. Hopefully you can see the cannula in her left hand. A coincidental finding from the photograph, but it then led to a discussion on the use of routine IV fluids in normal labour and it not being evidence-based. So our progress today. The implementation of the group as a reporting system began last November and to date, I checked this morning, there are 1,670 photos and videos that have been shared. From the perspective of the International Midwife Mentor Team, we feel that the ability to see what activities are being undertaken by the midwife supervisors and then being able to give constant feedback on this is the greatest benefit to the system. The system is responsive both 
to the current need of the situation and because feedback is provided quickly it does seem to result in midwives engaging well with it. We are able to observe whether the view of photo is correct plus any coincidental findings and provide feedback in text format immediately but also we are able to then follow this up through asking the midwife supervisors and midwives in person about knowledge or experience. So for example, if we provide feedback on a video of a role play about PPH, at the next visit to that health facility, we ask questions about the management of, to the, about the management of PPH to the midwives, or we might review notes or case referral forms to cross-reference that the theory is being implemented into practice. This change in outcomes, appropriate management and referral of women is the most important part of this system. We are seeing that the innovative solution is resulting in knowledge and skills being cascaded to midwives working in health facilities across the district. Sometimes it is difficult to assess, assess whether role plays are what midwives know is theoretically correct as opposed to what they do in practice. So being reference with cases is an effective way of assessing the implementation. Crisis has a new standard and now means that when travel to health facilities is not possible due to a multitude of reasons such as security concerns or poor weather conditions, mentoring is still possible. Yes. Christine here. I'm sorry to cut you off. We're just running a little bit short of time so I was wondering if we could hear from Amila. Yes, of course. I've just got my last sentence, so I shall hand over. Um, the system is without challenges, especially due to internet connection. But Amila is going to tell us a bit more about what some of these are from her perspective. And I shall hand over to her now. Ready to go ahead, Amila? Thank you, Stephanie, and thank you so much for giving me a floor in this conference and on this very special occasion to talk about our profession. Today, I stand for all midwives and supervisors to give a vote of thanks to our expected men. Stephanie, Dorin, and Rondi Mem for their valuable guidance. And also thanks to our technical coordinators, media coordinators, and quality assurance officers for their constant support. Our midwives work in both low and high resource for girls and newborn. Also, all the productive women in all situations. During midwifery study, they gain theoretical knowledge and practice under a lot of provision. They enter in their professional life. They are alone to take vital decision and lacking practical skill is not an option there. So they need updated knowledge box in whatsapp and also the mentoring process gives them a big platform to learn and revise continuously every day before our midwives are very scared to deal with any complicated cases and would call us several times during managing a single case. But now the group, they can confidently manage every day-to-day -day situation as well as the stabilizers the every complicated cases before referring them to the higher facilities and also accompanying the patient with necessary documents all on their own. We are also getting updates from the WhatsApp group of everyone's daily activities and they are receiving feedbacks within a very short time. By this group, we are also following one standard protocol for managing similar cases without any confusion. While we are mentoring our midwives, we are also learning about 
clinical experiences from them at the same time and the midwives practice among themselves at night and teach the interns as well. So we supervisor also discuss and adopt new teaching and learning techniques from each other. But it is a challenge to communicate and learn using WhatsApp as the internet network is very poor, especially in camp level. Also, role plays are difficult in basic busy facilities due to having many workload and facilities with a small number of midwives struggle to role play as non-technical people needs to be included and they don't understand what to do and also we can only share three to four minutes of video in this group is time so due to the storage of shortage of phone uh, rather than the whole cases and it must be deleted after it is uploaded onto the whatsapp group to keep enough storage for the next video and sometimes the patients don't give, give us permission to take photos of evidence-based care for sharing the group because they think it will hamper their privacy and also the confidentiality so in this case we don't take photo uh, and not share in this group we also uh, only discuss the cases in the group so in rohingya crisis midwives work more and more to help the patients get proper service by day and night and we are supervisors feeling so proud to help and support those heroes to handle and struggle any kind of situation Thank you for listening and we are ready to answer any question. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Amila. Really a wonderful insight into what you do and the support that you give. So thank you so much. Um, so yes, please, we do have one minute for questions. Um, so if you have any questions yeah. or pop them into the chat. Um, and just a reminder, Cecilia has put in the feedback in to where to send your attendances and to provide your feedback oh, yeah, your oh, certificates. Um, and um, please do remember to send in your um, selfies. And um, if you do have any um, questions for Amila or for any of the team, um, please um, stick up your hand or write them in the chat or go off mute and ask them directly before we must leave the room. So thank you, um, Stephanie, Doreen and Amila for a wonderful presentation. Thank you for hosting, Justine. Welcome, Stephanie. It was a pleasure.